Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Righteous Fire Chieftain in SSF. Um, so before we get started, do note that I, this is the same SSF, you know, environment as my Ball Lightning character. So this character is the second character in this league. And let's go ahead and talk about what we've accomplished and kind of where we're going. So this character has been played now for about 12 hours, so just about two days, so a day one and two progression. Uh, we're currently level 93 couple of deaths from running some really rippy maps uh the character's blasting tier 16 so i'm gonna go ahead and jump into a quick map to show you and then i will talk about the build you know gearing and my atlas so let's go ahead and get started now um strongest monster in pack gets dropped weapons converted to chaos orbs this would actually work out really well with uh rogue exiles so just for the sake of this we're actually going to go ahead. Actually, no, I'd rather save the rogue exiles for like a different strategy. So I don't really know what I would like to do with weapons here. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Instead, what I will do, though, is I will actually just hit X on this and I will do ambush because we are actually in ambush Atlas. And there's a chance I can get my money back on this. So let's go ahead and do that. I think there are some other good conversions. I just don't have them memorized. I know like... uh I think elder people were saying can drop like a bunch of good stuff as well when you do like the conversion with it so at the moment this is a uh, ambush themed atlas ambush implying strong boxes um the reasoning for ambush is number one it works out really well for rf chieftain uh number two on top of this it was really good for farming fusings which i needed to six link my uh, cloak of flame Primarily because I did not get lucky and I didn't find Black Morrigan for quite a bit. So Ambush was giving me a ton of fusings. The primary way I was acquiring fusings with uh, Ambush was basically Corrupted Six Links. Corrupted Six Links were 20 C each. So that was getting a ton. And then, for example, I think one map we did... One map we did... Um, monsters have, like, weapons converted to fusings and I put on Rogue Exiles, and we got like 250 fusings out of that map, so it was it was kind of crazy. Back 3C, not too bad. Now, another thing that's nice about Ambush is Ambush synergizes really well with Nico. You see this Nico guy right here? When you take the sulfite nodes on the tree, which I typically do now in SSF, these sulfite nodes, when you specifically take this one and you get doomed spirits, one of the outcomes of doomed spirits is spawning strong boxes. These strong boxes also inherit your atlas, and you can tell because it is a corrupted strong box, which you can see right here. So this synergy is actually really fantastic. You also have a chance of getting the double proc, meaning you can open it again, for example. So that's a really nice synergy right there. And then, in case I ever decide to go for Adorn later down the line, I'm already starting to build up some Azurite. Uh, so basically, whenever I click one of these Sulfite pods, which there's three every single map, there's a chance that some of it gets added as, uh, what is it, Sulfite or Azurite, which I will then later need for delving if we decide to go down that route, which would be a very long-term thing. Didn't really get any chaos back from the ambush mod, but that's totally fine. Okay, it's pretty much map there. So let's go ahead and jump back. So here's pretty much my atlas. You can see uh, I am blocking almost every single league mechanic. And the reason I'm blocking every league mechanic is not because I don't want to do them. I actually would like delirium, for example. I might unblock uh, delirium. It's because I'm trying to force scarabs into my strategy, which is basically ambush. And then later on, it will be anarchy. So with my setup here, when we're using strong boxes, right, the strong boxes paired with all flames are crazy strong because what happens is that when you put in a map, right, like say I take a random, I don't actually want to waste this map right now, but like say here, I'll take a low tier map like dungeon and I slap dungeon on here like this. These mobs now, when I replace them with whatever, like I do this, these mobs now are part of the base spawns so they can pop out of the ambush boxes this is like really fantastic for ssf so that's the primary reason i am currently doing that now anyway to talk about the character gear let's go ahead and uh, start so the skill tree looks pretty simple it is quite literally bare bones skill tree i want to drop this bottom side 
or in favor of a cluster jewel don't have a cluster jewel right now so we're not really doing that um the only thing is i don't have spiritual aid but that's just because i have more life nodes instead because i don't want to die in the content i'm running as for our character our weapon i just found a dot multi weapon and crafted fire multi nothing that crazy the spell damage only works for fire trap there here i've got purity of fire skitter bot and frost blink you'll notice i have a 19 purity of fire i'm actually not 90 max res uh, i will be 90 max res once this purity of fire dings 20 because it will go from 3% max fire to 4, and then when it's 4 max fire, I can switch this mastery from 8% damage per uh, aura or herald affecting you to 10% effect, and that will round the 4 to 5, thus creating 90 max res, and then when I can get a 23 purity of fire, I will work on dropping this part of the tree in favor of a cluster jewel and taking Sanctum of Thought with physical damage taken as chaos. The reason I talk about physical damage taken as chaos is because I'm in SSF and I have limited ways of acquiring physical damage taken. At the moment, I have 40 on Cloak of Flame and 6 on my helmet, so that's just 46. I will try to farm some Alvas later because we do have a couple of Rise of the Phoenixes here um, that I could absolutely double corrupt, so that is another option, but I would rather just fix my chaos res and potentially drop this section to get Fizz taken as chaos. The way I plan to alleviate the Chaos Res is by dropping a Kikizuru in favor of a very well-rolled Amethyst Ring. Uh, Kikizuru is just a nice placeholder right now for regeneration. It's not needed at all. My regen is, like, pretty solid, um, so I'm okay with removing that. If I remove it, unfortunately, it'll, like, brick all my gear, so I can't really show that. Uh, next up, Helmet. Helmet, I would like to recraft at some point. It's missing a suffix. Um... And I'd like to get a life roll here. I actually got lucky and wisdom scrolled this, but the way I would typically get a helmet, if it doesn't have 30% more Ellie, is harvest spamming with Reforged Fire, which you can see located right over here. It would be this modifier. Um, <clears throat> over here, I currently have Fire Trap, Swift Affliction, Trap and Mine, and Life Tap. I actually just hit 20 on most of my gems, so I need to flip all of them for level 120 quality. For people who don't know how that works, basically anything that's not a main gem, what you can do is you can take it. So here's like, for example, a burning damage, and I can vendor a burning with a GCP, which creates a level 120 gem to save you a bunch of gem cutters, but then you have to level them up again. It's totally worth it to save currency, especially in SSF, it's mandatory. Um, you just gotta be careful because you will be a bit weaker when you do that. Moving on a little bit more. Um, I have a Fractured Damage Over Time Amulet here that I found for our Fractured Dot Multi. Very rare find, so this one, what I plan on doing is the same thing as the Ring. I plan on doing Reforge Chaos over here. I just have to farm more Life Force. The Reforge Chaos is going to be really strong for hitting the Chaos Resistance on here. So basically, a Life Roll, Chaos Resistance, and if I could find Dexterity, that would be awesome, because a Dexterity node would save this here. Okay, and then currently I'm still running with Ash, Frost, and Storm. If I ever get a deeper Cluster Jewel setup, I could drop this, and then I could anoint um, Arsonist, which would be better than Ash, Frost, and Storm. Okay, uh, in my shield, we've got Punishment, Life Tap, and Malevolence. Remember, we are pretty much never dropping Rise of the Phoenix. We're just going to end up double corrupting. Uh, Kikizuru, we already spoke about. My RF links are Life Tap, Swift Affliction, Elemental Focus, Burning Damage, Righteous Fire, Efficacy. Now, my boots, I actually got crazy lucky on boots. Uh, we got essentially 30% movement speed, T1 armor roll, T2 life roll, 18% life regeneration rate, fire res, uh, and then I crafted fire and chaos, and then my implicits, I have life regenerate and movement speed. You can go with a max fire res, but I don't care about the max fire res right now because I will hit max fire res once I get that purity level 20. So maybe later there's room for some stuff, but at the moment, not really. Uh, I've got enduring cry, call to arms, cast one damage taken, immortal call. I'm personally choosing to set this at about 1k damage taken right now, which you can see is a level 7 cast when damage taken. Now, as for how I got these boots, I pretty much was just picking up all boots on my filter and IDing them. They did not look like this originally. They basically had movement speed, no life, and then good suffixes. So that was actually crafted through exalt slamming. Uh, I ended up exalt slamming the tier 2 maximum life. It's pretty much a choice of craft life and exalt slam for resistance, but I wanted chaos or take the gamble, craft resistance, and exalt slam for life. So that's pretty much how that happened. Over here, I've got some gloves. Uh, these gloves were basically crafted with reforge whatever I had available on the harvest bench. I think it was reforge chaos, which is how I got the chaos res. 
The big thing I don't like about these gloves is the lack of percent life regeneration rate. That's what I would prefer to have instead of fire res. However, since our sustain is really good right now, we're just keeping them until I can maybe farm like 10,000 life force and then I'll try redoing them for the literal exact same stats, but maybe tier one dex, tier one chaos res with life regenerate. That seems really hard to do, but that's pretty much what we'll do. Or I just keep them until I get another pair of gloves because since it has a nice life roll, there is the ability to always craft plus one area gems, which is going to be important. When the purity of fire is 20, we vault it for 21, we put it in our gloves for 22, and then we craft a plus one amulet or a plus one scepter, and then we get 23, which is the next breakpoint on max res for purity. Over here, I've got faster attacks, blood rage, life tap, and shield charge. Remember, blood rage is optional and just pretty much feeds in frenzy charges. So that's pretty much the character right now. Um, yeah, we're just going to keep on going, get some upgrades, and kind of see where it takes us. At some point, uh, after we have enough scarabs, since I currently don't have a third atlas, I'm currently basically running a the ambush and chill, which you guys saw here. And then I have a scuffed boss rush. So what I'll probably do is the boss rushing one is for the ball lightning character. It's basically for feeding like conquer maps, synth maps, guardian maps which I'm going to want for potential Watcher's Eye and or uh, Awaken Gems. Uh, I'll probably add Harvest to this Atlas too and make it so that I can boss rush and then farm Harvest um, specifically for this RF character. And then the third one, I'm thinking this one here is probably going to be the Rogue Exile strat to try to target farm. Um, I mean, this is really unlikely, but Mage Blood, Headhunter, mainly to be honest, Defiance of Destiny in the Amulet slot is what I would love to get because Defiance really makes Chieftain just AFK content. So that's pretty nice. While we're doing this strategy as well, we are feeding some T17 maps. So we are up to 11 T17s, most of them being Fortress, which is the easy one. So anyway, that is pretty much about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the update. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hope you guys are enjoying your RF builds. I'm happy to kind of restart here. So Catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash boxbudsundays. See you guys all tomorrow.